nationwide manhunt for the suspect who posted that crime on Facebook. This morning, there are new 911 calls from the scene, and we are learning more about the killer who's still on the loose. ABC's Alex Perez is in Cleveland, has the latest details for us. Good morning, Alex. Good morning, Robin. The FBI and local investigators have been working this case around the clock, speaking to anyone who may have seen anything and can provide evidence or information on this case. Authorities have also contacted law enforcement across the country, asking those agencies to be on alert for any sign of the suspect. This morning, for the first time, we are also getting our first listen to some of those moments uh, as the drama unfolded, the panic and confusion that began right after that shooting. Found me somebody I'm about to kill. This morning, Steve Stevens is on the FBI's most wanted list. The hunt intensifying and now going nationwide. Our reach uh, now is um, basically all over this country. This as new 911 tapes are released of the moment a neighbor witnessed the shooting aftermath of the unarmed elderly man. Where was he shot at? He's been shot in the head. Is he awake at all? No, I don't he's gonna cut his dead. Authorities say Stevens' cell phone signal pinged Sunday afternoon, about 100 miles east of Cleveland, near Erie, Pennsylvania. Police say they made contact with him by phone late Sunday, trying to persuade him to turn himself in, but now his trail has gone cold. Uh, this individual is armed and dangerous, and quite frankly, at this point, he could be a lot of places. Stevens recorded this shocking video of himself randomly targeting 74-year-old Robert Godwin, killing him in cold blood, then posting it to Facebook Sunday afternoon. Past years been really f***ed up for me. This morning, we're learning more about the 37-year-old suspect, a case manager who worked with troubled youth. I deal with people's problems every day, but when it comes to my shit, nobody gives a in his Facebook rants, complaining about the downward spiral of his life after gambling and girlfriend trouble. Earlier videos posted to his YouTube page, a stark contrast, showing the Cleveland native bowling, fishing, and even celebrating yeah, we did it, baby. his city's basketball win last year. A former college friend of the alleged killer, stunned. It was an act of cowardice. Stand up, be a man, turn yourself in. Overnight, to family and friends gathering to remember the innocent victim who leaves behind 10 children and 14 grandchildren. I saw the video and it forever would be in my mind um, because I saw the fear in my father's eyes. He was so afraid. He was. He was so afraid. So sweet. And authorities say they are following up on, quote, dozens and dozens of tips. There's also now a $50,000 reward for any information leading to an arrest in this case. Robin? Alex, thank you. Joining us now is our chief business correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis, and our contributor, former Dallas police chief, David Brown. Chief Brown, let me start with you. Where does the search stand right now? It's a national search has been reported, and we are combing all of the technology uh, that he might use beyond cell phones, just social media, might be uh, leads that might develop as well as family and friends because it's highly suggestive that he's getting help in order to be able to disappear off the radar like this. Because yesterday we were saying there were five, day, five states that were on high alert. Now they're just saying it's a nationwide search. As more time passes, it gets, becomes a little more complicated. More complicated and more difficult for law enforcement to be able to locate. They need help from the public, and they've made those pleas uh, to the public to report anything they see that might be suspicious, that might uh, be a tip that leads them to capture this suspect. You're familiar with, with, with searching for suspects. So, so what, what's next in the manhunt, do you think? In most of our roadways, there are cameras, either over tollways, and there are cameras in public spaces like malls and, and locations where people frequent. And so we're combing all of those types of technologies in order to ho hopefully get that one little tip mm. of a license plate or just a suspicious thing that happened that people report and follow up on that. But it's, again, it's a needle in a haystack yeah. type of search. And so we need the public's help, and we need to emphasize that it's a crime yeah. to hinder apprehension. It's a crime to, to secrete him. Yeah, because there's a the thought that he must be getting some help here. Yes. Rebecca, going back uh, to Facebook, uh, what are they saying this morning about this? Well, what's so interesting, Robin, is that as Chief Brown points out, technology can help mm. us 
find this individual, but it also helped this individual put his story public. And overnight, Facebook has now apologized for this video being up on its site for as long as it did. They said, as a result of this terrible series of events, we are reviewing our reporting flows to be sure people can report videos and other material that violates our standards as easily and quickly as possible. We know we need to do better. And do better is part of the thing because people are the users of Facebook mm -hmm. right now are the people who help Facebook take down this material. In order to take down material like this, as of today, Facebook needs people to go on their site and say, this exists. Yeah, there's nothing legally wrong with what Facebook did, but people are thinking you know, morally, is there something more they can do? And, and they want to do more. They are developing technology to try to do more. If you look at that timeline, between the time yeah, that I this individual posted his first video until they took it down, that was more than two hours. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks so much.